I was walking to the podium and the Lord just laid it on my heart and I've had all this week to really dig in and, uh, and uh, I just want to deliver my heart but Galatians 5 verse number 1 Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 1 <coughs> There say amen. amen. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again. All week, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> entangled again yeah. with the yoke of bondage. Entangled again with the yoke. Of bondage. Galatians chapter 6, <coughs> verse number 1. 
verse number two. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, not spiritual, don't give them advice. <coughs> Amen? Or oh me, or oh my. Oh, yeah. Or spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of and it tells you how to do it. Yeah. Meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Lest thou also be tempted. And I want to preach for a few moments. I won't take long. Simply this. Don't get trapped. Right. Don't get trapped. It's easy to get trapped again from your past failures, past fear. Amen. Galatians 5 and 1 told us, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. In other words, how God sets you free. Stand fast. Stand firm. Plant your feet in the liberty that God has given you. And don't get entangled again by your past, by the yoke of bondage. Amen. Won't you lift your hands? Ask the Lord to help us one more time. Lord, we thank you one more time for this opportunity, Lord, to be in your presence. Lord, I'm your servant today. Help me, Lord. Lord, open our hearts, open our ears, God. Lord, Lord how I feel how you gave this to me, Lord. Lord, Lord deliver it the way that you would have, God. Lord, let me deliver it how it is that you would have it be done today. Let us grab a hold and we give you the praise and the honor. Yeah. And everybody say amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Now, I, I, it may take me a little bit to get off the ground, but I'm going somewhere with this. And uh, But don't get trapped. Right. And it's easy to get entangled in things of our past, and failures of our past, and get caught up on the mishaps of our past. It seems like Every time that you you start to do good, let me turn this down just a little. You, you start to do good. Never mind, I see what it is. You start to do good. Something happens to remind you of a failure that you had. To remind you of something that you did that kind of gets you sidetracked a little bit. And uh, because the thing about it, that's the only thing that the devil has on you right now. Because he can't see into the future. So what he tries to do is to get you entangled in the mess that you was in. Into the places that you used to go. In the situation that you got yourself into. Because it happens. Every once, sometime or another, has got yourself into a place. That you say, Lord, how am I going to get out of this? How am I going to, you know, uh, I, I, I don't do much fishing now. But Brother Fleshman, he likes to fish. Amen. I, I, I have a short attention span. And as soon as I get my line in the water, if I get tangled up in a branch and that first hook gets broken off that thing, I'm done. <laughs> because it takes so much time to get that hook. You got to make sure that you know exactly where to place that hook. But there are things underneath that water that you can't see. That's been there for a long time. That that has trapped other people that has thrown the line into that same place that you did. Yes. Amen. There are times that as a child of God that there is stuff that is hid underneath that you cannot see. That you don't know exactly how it is that you are going to get entangled with it. And the best thing to do is, God, I want to live in the liberty of where you set me free. I don't want to go back to the places uh, that I used to go to because there's something there uh, that's going to trap me. There's something there that's going to get a hold of my spirit. It's going to get a hold of me and it's going to get me entice me to go back. Now, some people like trying to throw that worm or that, that, that lure into a certain place because it looks like it's a good place for a big old bass. It looks like, Brother Collins, oh, this is the right spot. 
And you go for that spot, but for some reason, because your aim isn't right, you're you're lure, lure, lure. Your worm lands in a different place from where you were directing it to land. And you don't hit the spot that you wanted to hit. So somehow you get entangled with the mess that is around where you wanted it to hit. It gets entangled in the trees and the branches. And, and sometimes you throw it on the bank and you get trapped in a tree above the bank. And it, come on. If you ever fished and ever done that, you know what I'm talking about. So, but in the life that we live for God, there are places that we want to go. There's a direction that God has us to go. For some reason, that rope gets into the wrong place. Right. <coughs> Hallelujah. And we start to get entangled. And we start to get in a place that we should not be. And then we, the story of Samson, we all know so well. He, uh, he went back to a place that he should have not kept going back to. But because of what he saw, he wanted to keep going back to that place. And eventually he got trapped. Eventually the words of the Lyle trapped him. And he gave in. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are times that you may think you're strong enough to overcome things. But if you keep going back because you overcame it the first time, or you overcame it the second time, you think I'm strong enough. But, I mean, get back in the good book and look at Samson. He thought he was, because whenever he woke up that last time, he shook himself as every time before. But what he didn't realize, uh, that his strength was gone. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. There's things that try to entangle you. I mean, but in many ways, Galatians 5 and 1 is a great summary of how everything Paul wanted the Galatians to understand. That Christ had liberated them and set them free. And that they should stand firm. That they don't that they should not submit to the yoke of the slavery that they was once in. Yeah. You don't need to be enslaved by your past. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, you don't need to be enslaved by the things of your past. You can't change what happened, but you can go a different direction into a way that God will lead you to. The first part is said to stand firm. Don't submit to slavery. The contrast between freedom and slavery continues to be his major thrust throughout the whole first part. Of Galatians 5. And then we read Galatians 6 and 1. It tells us, after he gives us the instructions to stand in the liberty, not to go back and get entangled of our past, he redirects and listen, boys. Hallelujah. If you see a brother that has fallen, you don't beat him down. Right. Yeah. We've all been there. We've done it. But the scripture tells us. Right. I'll throw it back up here. Jason. Six and one. Brethren, if a man be overtaken, not fall into, but he's overtaken from fault. The you which are spiritual restores such a one. Why? So that consider that it may be you that's going to get tempted the next time. It may be you that falls into that situation and needs somebody. Right. Don't get trapped of this thing that, hey amen, well, they messed up. There's no hope for them. Don't get trapped. Well, they'll come in for a day or two and then they'll go right back out and they'll just be the same way that they used to. They get that mindset. That's exactly what's going to happen. Don't get trapped. Right. Significantly, it is Christ who made us free. We don't make ourselves free. Freedom is a gift from God. <laughs> Given to us and received by faith. Right. When we struggle to free ourselves, we just become more tangled again in the yoke of bondage. Let me say that again. When we struggle to free ourselves and we don't trust in God and we don't depend on 
him. We don't depend on the way maker. We don't depend on God to get us out of the mess. We will start to get entangled even deeper into the mess that maybe we have accidentally stepped into at no fault of our own. But we know that if I can do this. I'm strong enough. I'm a man. A pride cometh before a fall. Right. And a haughty spirit. And then should I just forgot? Right there. What she said. <laughs> but if we don't realize anybody can get trapped, Brother Jim. It doesn't matter how long you've been in church. We all know somebody in our lives that, that's lived this a long time. But now, for some reason, they get entangled. They've got entangled into something, amen, that has pulled them away from the house of God. Yeah. That's pulled them away from the love of God. Amen. Hebrews 12 and 1. And I read this last week. Wherefore, seeing you are also compassed about with such a great cloud of witness, let us. Lay aside every weight and sin which does easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. It's kind of hard to run the race if you're entangled up in something else. Have you ever, ever seen, you know, in elementary school we had field day. And we had track day. And other schools would come to the school and, and we would race around that track and the 100 meter dash and the and the 200 meter dash and the hurdles and the shot put throw and the discus throw and all of that. But when someone who was running the race would get entangled in that hurdle because they misjudged exactly where the hurdle was or misjudged of how high they really needed to jump. I mean, they would get tangled up and you know what they do? Yeah. You fall flat on your face. Because you get tangled up because you didn't realize exactly what it was that you was facing. What's keep what is that keeps hindering us from living a life of obedience? Do you struggle with a particular sin? A particular attitude? Because attitudes can affect your walk with God. Amen? Amen. <laughs> How you perceive something will affect your walk with God. You can go into it with, I'm going to get through this, and you'll walk, walk straight through it. Or you can get to this, oh man, I can't do this. Oh, how am I supposed to do that? And you enter into, you know what you're going to do? You set yourself up for failure. But I've read the back of the book. You know what? We win. I said we win. It doesn't matter what obstacle comes our way. It doesn't matter what trial comes our way. It doesn't matter. Because he's not going to put more on a child of God than you can handle. He's going to be saying, you know what? They're going to make it through this. I know. And we know. Hallelujah. We've got to lay aside some things. Brother well, Vern, head to the back room. <laughs> We've got to remember there's times in our walk with God, that things happen to us. Mm -hmm. Amen. This represents our life. That's our lifeline. Mm -hmm. And some people's lifeline is shorter than others. But, see here, we're going to have to do this. Got to hold that. Hold on to I mean, someone comes in to the house of God. It won't take me a minute, just stand there. They come into the house of God, and they, they start doing good. Life's good. May have to put it down somewhere. Life's good. Things are going great in their life. And, 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 and they're, they're, they're walking it. I mean, they're seeing victories, and they're seeing blessings, and they're seeing everything that happened, and everything's going great. Come here, Brother Jason. Unwrap this thing and take it all the way around there. Amen. And everything is going good. Keep a hold tight on that so he can get it up through it. Everything's going great. Life's going great. 
Amen. They're living for God. They're being a witness for God. Life's going good. Everything. And people's coming in and they're doing Bible studies and, and everything's going great and, and life just hunky dory and everything's good. And they're saying, man, I'm going good. Well, I'm thankful because this one came into church and this happened and then all of a sudden, keep on rolling. Because we need a lot of it. All of a sudden, this person starts trying to get closer. Keep on, just hold it, follow it down through. Let it go behind you. They keep trying to get closer to God. Things are going great. And then, keep on, keep on going. Come stop right there. And they're walking along in this rope of life, and things are going great. And then all of a sudden, everything's been good, but something hits them. It's not the baby either. <laughs> Stress hits a child of God for the first time since they've been in their walk with God. And, 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 and then all of a sudden, just every when things are going right, stress hits them. And all of a sudden, they start remembering things from their past that had got them down. Mm -hmm. They start remembering. So they start getting entangled. Within the mess that caused the stress. And the devil starts throwing things back on them. And then they're like, oh man, how am I going to be able to? Man, things was good, so good yesterday. Life was so great yesterday. But now, for some reason, there's a stressful situation that hit. And they start getting entrapped just a little. They're still able to raise their hands. It may be in trouble. He's still able to raise his hands. He's still able to come into service. But it seemed like when they leave, amen, he said, Lord, what's going to happen tomorrow? But this is going on. Life's happening. They don't got the same zeal. It's starting to fade a little bit because of stress. And they get entangled in the stresses of life, even though they're still victorious. And maybe they don't really see that they're still able to raise their hand and they're still able to walk pretty good. And all of a sudden, they keep on walking. They get across that hurdle of stress. And they have a few days of victory and a few services of victory, even though they're still remembering. Only yeah. then all of a sudden, worries of past failures starts to hit them because they've been stressed. They've been trapped by stressful past. They've been trapped. And now not only are they stressed out, they're worrying because they're remembering who? Go ahead. Wrap it around his body. They're remembering who it is that they were. And now, even though they're still coming to church, I know it's kind of silly. That's they're, they're still coming to church. But now they're stressed out and they're worried because, well, what is this person going to think of about who I used to be? What, what, are the, what, what, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if the pastor calls on me and, and, and he asks me to do something and I just don't think I can do it because I'm a failure? And they get worried. And they start backtracking and they're tangled up a little bit more in the cares of life. Yeah. They're entangled a little bit more in the worries of life because now not only have they been stressed out, but now they're worrying about being stressed out. Yeah. <laughs> and they start worrying, well, what if someone goes digging into my past and they see what I used to be? You won't walk. He's still able to walk. There's worry. We're going down through there. We're going to wrap you up as you walk. Because you're worrying about things and about life and about situation. You're still able to walk. But then your past. Go ahead, bro. Then it's past. Hold on. Stop. Where you are. Back up. Go ahead, Brother Collins. Wrap him up some more. And then the past starts to creep up. I know this is simple, but listen. The past starts to creep up. Past is too short. <laughs> and things start happening. Hold on right here. Don't move. Come up this way a little bit. 
Stand right there in the middle. Come on up. Come on a little bit farther and you're going to turn around. But the past is there. And now he's still able to walk. But he's still not able to praise God like he used to. Right. Because of that, the stress and the worries. And now because someone talked about his past. Not in a good way. And he starts to get entangled about the cares of this life. And he gets entangled with everything that's going on around him. And now he's so worried that someone's going to say something to him when he comes to church. Yeah. Come on. Now, right. He thinks everybody's going to talk about him when he comes, even though nobody else is thinking anything. But somewhere in his mind, the devil had got him confused and got him so tangled up with the stress of life and with the worries of life. But now his past is haunting him. Oh, and he forgets what the scripture said in Galatians 5 and 1 to stand firm in the liberty of what Christ has done for you in a, just, in a just way. And now here he is. He's feeling defeated. He's feeling stressed out. He's feeling worried. And now he's at the point of giving up. Wrap him up good. <laughs> Wrap that thing around his ankles. <laughs> Come on, we're going somewhere. Jumper. Here he is. Because of the stress. Just tangled up. Right around his feet. Don't worry about up top. Just get his feet. He's, he's at the point. Of giving up. He's got entangled in everything in the world. That's good. Entangled in everything. Entangled in cares of life. Entangled in fear and doubt. Now he's so stressed out, he don't even want to go to church anymore. He don't want to read his Bible anymore. Oh. He don't want to go out of his house anymore because fear will yes. do that to you. Yes. That's Sister yes. Debbie. She knows. Yes. And the Lord's healing her. Yes, yes he is. And then you get so entangled with everything and now you think nobody at the church likes you. <laughs> nobody at the church cares. <laughs> Galatians 5 is teaching us stand firm right. in the liberty. Hallelujah. Don't get entangled. Don't, don't, don't worry about your past. Don't worry about the cares of your past that's beat you down. <coughs> and here's the individual. Now they're bound up. Even though through Galatians 5, throughout the whole chapter, it tells us, stay firm. Stay firm in the liberty. But for some reason, because of stress and worries in the past, they're ready to give up. And then we get to Galatians 6. And 1. We've all been here. I said, we've all been here. Some of you are probably here right now and don't want to admit it. And we get to Galatians 6 and 1, and what does it tell us? Brethren, hold up there, brother. If a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, Move up a little bit. <laughs> You're helping them walk to the altar. You're helping them get to where they need to be. See him right there. He says, overtaking of all you which are spiritual. Restore. Help them to the best of your ability. 
to get untangled from the stress. Pray with them. Give them a phone call. Text them. Come on. Whatever it is that you got to help restore. You got to do it in the spirit of meekness. I love you, brother. Man, I know things are hard. I know life's hard right now. I know you want to give up. Amen. But you're not in this alone. You're my brother. You're my sister. So it goes. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to help them get out of the trap that they are. But you better do it in meekness. You're not beating them down. But just tell them, I love you. You're going to make it. The devil don't have you. You you are victorious. God thinks you're special. You're peculiar. It doesn't matter what the past said about you. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about you. It doesn't. You're going to be all right. You're going to make it. 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 And all of a sudden, when you get to that place that the freedom starts coming, and they realize someone does love me. Hallelujah. In the past of the entanglement, when brethren, you better do it in meekness. In love, because if you don't, the same mess. Come on, the same mess. They got them entangled. You better consider it yourself. But whether or not you're tempted. Whether or not you're tempted. Let's think. There's an old story. Now I won't go into it all, but it's, I've read it before. The young young fish that the elders warned him about the hook. Warned him that it may look good on the end of that hook, but it's fake. It's not going to taste like what you want. And that little fish gave in one day to the pressures. When he bit into that worm, it tasted like plastic. It wasn't the, the, the savory taste of what he thought it was going to look like, but it was too late. And the hook was set. Pleasures of sin are only for a season. It may look enticing. And it may look good at the moment. And it may feel good at the moment. But in the end, it can hook you in. And we, who are spiritual, we have a mandate from heaven to go to that individual with meekness and tell them how much that God can set them free. How God can do it. Don't get trapped in your past. Don't get trapped by past failures. Everybody in this place has had a failure in your life once before. Don't get trapped in it. You're not who you, when you went under in the lovely name of Jesus and was buried in his name, yes. the old man was passed. Oh, You're a new creature in Christ. The slate was wiped clean. You're yes. not who you used to be. Yes. It doesn't matter how bad the past was. The devil would try to trap you in your past. But God is saying in Galatians 5 and 1, stand firm. Hallelujah. Stand firm in the liberty we're in. God has made us free. Not set us, but he's made us free. And don't get entangled again in the yoke of bondage, in the yoke of slavery of your past. 
I mean, won't we lift our hands? Ask the Lord to help us. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, these altars are open. Won't you come and pray? Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. 